Hey guys, KN4YRM. Just a quick video, I'll try and keep it quick, on the what I'm calling the slave remote keyer module. Uh, the difference between the master and the slave, the master is the ESP32 uh, board, whatever you want to call it, that plugs into my paddles, and that's I give it my input through the paddles, and it takes my dits and dahs and turns them into characters and sends the characters over Wi-Fi, my local Wi-Fi. Uh, it could travel over the internet, but it's just on my Wi-Fi for now. Uh, to this device, which then keys my transmitter with the character that it received. And it all happens very fast, and it's working. So I just wanted to quick give a quick overview of this piece of it. And uh, uh, what, what we're looking at here is the top side. And this is just a little display. And it's not really necessary. It's just nice when I'm uh, playing around with it, getting it to work, and so on. It's a nice visual confirmation if I don't hear the transmitter keying. Uh, at least I can see, okay, well, this is receiving characters from the master. If this screen is blank, I know something's wrong. I need to address that. Um, and I also put this buzzer on there. It gives me uh, sort of a side tone as well. It lets me know uh, when I'm when it's working. Uh, but again, this, this is going to sit in the car, so I won't see the screen. I won't hear that buzzer. It's just there when you're getting set up and it's pretty useful um, and you can see sticking out here is a capacitor um, 0.01 microfarads and I'll show you the wiring on that and that was added uh, so that it sits across the uh, keyer transmission the keyer line which uh, plugs into this 3.5 millimeter jack there and that's its purpose is to uh, filter out the RFI that was coming from the radio and messing up the keying. I should mention, I was having a uh, problem. It started as uh, signal reports. Uh, people were telling me your your carrier or your tone, however you want to say it, was um, garbled or warbled. Um, it wasn't a clean dee dee. It was like dee -dee 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 -dee. Oh, I'm not doing it right. but uh, and so I went out and I would listen to um, the transmitter. I put the monitor on. I could hear it. And uh, yeah, it wasn't a clean tone. It was a perfectly clean tone when I turned break in off. So it wasn't anything wrong with the speaker on the radio or something like that. It was only when I was actually transmitting on the air. And that's what it made me realize. It was RFI coming back in and uh, messing up. I guess the the this thing wasn't able to pull the transmission line to ground cleanly uh, because of the RFI. Um and, uh, you know, I'm, I'm going to do some other things to help with that. I already had two um, ferrite clamps with uh, wrapped and everything on that, um, on, the, on, the, on the line to the keyer, but I guess that wasn't enough, or RFI is getting in some other way. Anyways, the capacitor took care of all that. Now it's nice and clean. Um, on the other side, we see the ESP32 uh, dev board. And I'm going to pause real quick just so I can pull that out because I need two hands to do it. Okay, and I've, I've just removed this um, from the uh, female header pins uh, that, that it sits in. And just you can get a, a look at, you know, the wiring. Nothing fancy. It's just, you know, prototype board and all about getting her done. Um, you can see the 3.5 millimeter jack. Um, the green line is obviously uh, the ground. And, um, and you can see that, you know, one of them goes back over to the capacitor. Um, this you know, this yellow line goes back over the capacitor. I'm not going to sit here and explain all my wiring. It, it and it just dropped out of focus. I'm sorry about that. This is all just being done on a cell phone. But um, come on, there you go. We're back in focus, and you can see um, down here when my pointer finger is pointing that uh, that other component there is the optocoupler and um, a little resistor. And the way that works is that the ESP32 dev board, or uh, it um, it sends the signal to the uh, um, transmitter to key, uh, the, you know, the whole it, it the, the whole principle is that the the this keyer tricks my transmitter into thinking it's a straight key, so it just tells um, 
the transmitter to hold hold the keyer down as, a, as if I were keying on a straight key. And that's how it turns my dits and dahs and so forth into uh, what I want to send. So it uses this uh, optocoupler uh, rather than a transistor. And I, and I went with optocoupler thinking that would um, help with uh, RFI isolation. Uh, I don't know that that was the best decision anymore. But um, because of you know what turned out to happen where I needed to add that capacitor to filter out the RFI, I don't know if some other circuit would have done a better job. But in any case, um, you know, it's getting it done. So, you know, whatever, it works. <laughs> you know, at the end of the day, it works. Um, and you can see, I kind of had to bend that uh, transistor, you know, put it in there like that and bend it so that the, uh, um, the dev board can still uh, snap in on top. And, um, you know, and then just some very simple wiring. Um, you know, you can see just using solder bridges to connect things uh, on the other side. Well, it's not focusing, so you can't really see. But anyways, you know, it's nothing fancy. This is a prototype. If I want to at some point, um, I have um, some of these ESP32 modules. So this this whole piece, if you don't know, this is um, this is called a dev board. And there's, there's a ton of these different dev boards um, for the ESP32. And this silver piece with the little PCB antenna on it, that's your ESP32 module, it's called. And these modules come in all different flavors. They're, they're more or less the same size, you know, slight differences and, and differences in feature sets and, you know, memory, how many cores and so on. But this silver thing is your ESP32 module. Underneath this, this silver uh, cap, which is just a shield, the ESP32 chip is actually inside of there. Um, with some other circuitry and so on. So, um, you know, like the really black belt uh, develop, you know, uh, microcontroller guys, they might buy an ESP32 chip, just the bare chip, and, and, you know, build the supporting stuff around it the way they want. But I would say, I would say the vast majority of people just buy these module board, you know, the complete dev boards that have, you know, the USB interface, maybe even battery charging and stuff like that. Um... But if you can't find a board that does what you want in the right form factor, you can just buy this module, this little silver piece here, and get and, and make design your own PCB, get them printed, um, and then you have whatever you want. And I've done that with other um, ESP32 projects uh, unrelated to ham radio. I don't know if I'm going to bother to do that for uh, for this this project. I might. I don't know. We'll see how it goes. I'm going to let this thing prove itself for a few months before I decide, okay, do I, do I want to do that? Um, anyway, I just thought I would mention that because that was something I, I really didn't understand when people would use the term ESP32 module or chip or, or dev, but I didn't know the difference. So I'm just sharing that. All right, and then um, I guess the final thing I, I'll, I'll talk about real quick is um, the case in 3D printing, and that is... Instead of building one case, this is my advice. This has been so helpful on so many projects. Look up uh, poly panels, P O L Y P A N E L S. And the poly panel concept is um, these three. I can't, you know, I can't even describe the shape. That, you know, um, and the and the camera's not going to capture it for you. But they snap together and they snap apart. And I use PETG. And they snap together, snap apart, and they and, and they rotate, and and really the whole concept is this this 35 millimeter, ah, 35 millimeter long um, section, but you could make the shape it any way you want, and people turn these into art, they turn them into you know so many different things because they don't just snap together, they they kind of rotate. Just just Google it, look at the YouTube videos, and you'll you'll see what I'm talking about. So instead of building, you know, one case and and that print taking forever, like you know, say I want to make this. This I side this this hole here is too too big. I want to make it smaller, or I want holes here, and I don't want to. I want to do something nicer than just just you know taking a drill and making holes. I'd have to reprint the whole case. But if you take this poly panel approach, you can just pull out the panel you want, snap everything back together. Also, uh, like ham radio, where, where you're doing all kinds of prototyping and making changes along the way, and you, and, you know yeah, you can figure out ways to to get your case closed with 
Um, you know, I, I use brass fittings sometimes, brass inserts with screws and stuff like that. But this is so easy. You just, you know, I won't do it because I need two hands right now. Because uh, it takes a little bit of force to get these things to snap together. Um, but I'm, I'm just going to snap this in place. So, what you know, what's going to happen is this guy is going to go. Actually, he's going to go the other way. But, you know, you get the point. He's going to go in there. And then it's going to snap on there. And I'll just use a little bit of, you know, pack packaging styrofoam or, you know, paper or maybe even hot glue, whatever, just to, you know, uh, keep this from jiggling around in there. Just hold it nice and firm. So are these poly panels waterproof because of that edge? No, they're not. So if, if you care about waterproof, you know, but you could always run a bead of uh, hot glue, hot glue or silicone or something and seal up the little holes there, you know. Um, but I don't care about waterproofing. This is, uh, in the car. It is just to, you know, give it some protection so that loose wires or, you know, whatever. Something doesn't, I mean, cause you know, this, this just can't be left like that. Something bad will happen. Anyways, I, this video went a little longer than I thought, but, uh, thanks for, thanks for hanging in there. All right. That's that. KN4YRM. And I'll hopefully get you on the air.